Well, many of you know, here in the blend, we are huge animal lovers. And you may not know that Las Vegas is actually the home of the World Center of Exotic Birds. It is all led by a bird man. He is about to join us with some beautiful animals. The show is going to the birds, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Joe Craftwell, a oh, wall well, rather, he is the, uh, the the bird man. He joins us now with uh, with two amazing uh, animals with us. Uh, wow, hello, hi. Thank you guys, hi, good morning. I, I uh, wanted to open up with these two birds because um, this bird here, her name is Sheba and she is a very rare paddle or eagle. And uh, 30 years ago, she was a gift from Siegfried and Roy oh. and uh, was one of Roy's personal birds. And Kitten up here on my shoulder actually appeared in the Siegfried and Roy IMAX movie where Roy is walking through the garden with uh, Kitten on his arm and releases the bird to fly over a couple of tigers that were running loose. It was a difficult scene, but it looks great on the IMAX. That's phenomenal. Man, Neat. oh man. <laughs> but I actually, uh, that was right when I came to Las Vegas and took over the bird show at the Tropicana. And ever since then, I've been reinvesting 101% of the money that we would make into this bird sanctuary. We got to the point where we were helping rehome pet birds that could no longer be cared for and uh, rescue wild birds and then started our conservation breeding programs for endangered species. And we never thought there would come a time when our bird shows, which now happen across the country at zoos and parks, would suddenly no longer be able to have an audience. And that really threw us all for a loop. So we've been working hard to uh, wow. raise money from donations and uh, do whatever we can to keep everybody going. Look at that. Wings, take a flight for us? Oh, there, there we go. go. <laughs> there we go. Nice. There you go. Hey, oh my goodness. Well, I'm just, <laughs> Flying I'm away. Just fascinated this is amazing i think we're going to see a crane here in just a moment joe tell us a little about your background i know you grew up in the bay area and that you were drawn to birds at a very young age yes i uh i actually uh rescued my first bird come on up it's okay i actually rescued my first bird when i was 10 years old it was a little type uh type of parrot called a conure that nobody wanted and uh as soon as I brought the bird home, I was able to steal my sister's Barbie toys and build him skates and scooters and bicycles. And I thought he was just a normal bird because every bird I saw on television could do cool tricks. So I thought all parrots did that. And it took a while to realize I had a little bit of a knack for it. And I started uh, rescuing more birds, working with different species and uh, actually started my bird show when I was 16 years old and then became a licensed falconer on top of that, which is what taught me how to build relationships with all these cool birds. And uh, like Dallas here, an African crown crane. And uh, that's what really allowed the show to grow. And as the show grew, so did our ability to work with endangered species and, and rescue. No question. Okay, we're gonna send Dallas off here to keep it, everything moving. It appears as though go, Dallas, uh, Dallas has the same problem we all do. We haven't been to our uh, salon in a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the feathers are getting a little long there. It, it happens. It's just really an incredible skill to be able to interact with these birds. Yeah, no question. And, and yeah. here's the deal. I, I know that these shows are incredibly important uh, to, to you and being able to fund the operation. So how can bird lovers uh, help you uh, continue during this whole, you know, sort of soft shutdown we're in the middle Quarantine. of right now? Well, my foundation is called the Condor Fund. And uh, we actually have two breeding pairs of condors. We're, as far as I know, the only private condor breeding effort that's going on. And uh, our website, thecondorfund.org, shows several different ways people can get involved and they can help us out. And everyone that donates to the Condor Fund to help us through this period will actually be invited to a donor-only show uh, to happen Hello. sometime later this year, whenever audiences are okay again that's phenomenal excellent well we sure appreciate the way you and just speaking of condors oh. this is oh here we go this is queen victoria right here she is actually our youngest condor she's 26 years old this year and she weighs about 23 pounds and has a wingspan of uh just shy of 10 feet can you come up here and show everybody the wingspan there you Whoa. go 
Oh, oh boy. This is a challenge to do in a living room, by the way. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? If it's ever raining, you, go, you don't have an umbrella, you just take a condor with you. He's hiding under one of those ah! bricks. It's pretty remarkable. Oh, my gosh. Forget about That's it. So She's cool. 20. She's 26 well, years old. You know, How when, old when I go to pet yard with that bird on my arm, it helps with social distancing. Yeah, no question. There we go. Exactly. Yeah, Chris, yeah, have the, uh, yeah, listen, stay a condor's wing away from me. Uh, so if that's oh the God, youngest, how old are the other condors? Uh, we have one that's 27 years old, one that's 28 years old, and uh, our oldest is 30 years old. So they, uh, they live to be 70 to 80 years old. Wow. And unfortunately, while California condors have been doing really well in um, not just in Central California, but also the Grand Canyon, Zion areas. But in South America, the resources and the education has been a little slower and Andean condors are still on the decline. We've run out of time, but we want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, I was just on your website as well, Birds and Beasts with an N.com, birdsandbeasts.com. Thank you for joining us and thank you for taking care of the birds.